Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, and we are specifically going to talk about Forge Fitzwilliams' new, uh, played by Hugh Grant, and the stat block that was dropped on D&D Beyond, um, and it is the Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves, Thieves Gallery content element that is on D&D Beyond, and let's talk about this exciting new stat block. Um, Forge Fitzwilliams. So there's a lot here. So let's talk about Forge Fitzwilliams himself. So first of all, this is the first... So one, I just wanted to let you guys know, I have a uh, a playlist. You can, you can get the link below. So I have done content in less than three days on every single hero in the movie, right? So Doric, Edgen Darvis, Holga Kilgore, um, Simon Armour, uh, Zenk... Uh, Yar, Yargin, right? Um, and so I have content of, on all of them. And now we're, we're dealing with people who are not in Edgen Darvis's player character group. Um, but, you know, so those are really the player characters of this movie. And Fitzwilliams is a non-player character, an important one, right? Um, and actually what's really interesting is like, I almost think we, we, non-player character is such a terrible term and we re, we really need to retire it and start talking about, I think we should be referring to them as entities and the player characters as characters. Uh, and that's actually what I'm doing in my, uh, Forges and Forests tabletop role-playing game, which you will also find here, link below, or <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, which is, is kind of interesting. There's a playlist for, um, for a tabletop role-playing game I'm building where I refer to NPCs as entities and player characters as characters, right? And I, I think we should start to switch over to that model for D and D because NBC is just—it's such a terrible. It's just not good language. So I wanted to talk. So let's talk about Forge Fitzwilliams. What's really different about him? So one, he's a villain. That's like very clear, and that's a big deal because every single hero in the movie, even though they are a band of thieves, is good aligned. There's not a neutral one among them, right? Like these are heroes, right? And D and D is returning to its. Um, Returning to a really important, uh, really critically important aspect of its game, which is alignment. And I really think alignment, the, the inclusion of alignment is what makes Dungeons & Dragons so critically better than board games, and so critically better than war games, and so critically better than collectible card games. It, it really makes it unprecedented and unparalleled in what it's, what's able to accomplish. Because the moment you are dealing with alignment, you're dealing with morality, you're dealing with questions of wisdom versus knowledge, and it's a really big deal. Like, it's it's a lot, right? So I just really think it's really fascinating, uh, you know, uh, and so this is a villain. And the language in his lore block, in his lore section within his stat block, and actually, you know, that's a great question. We haven't even talked about that, right? The lore isn't in the stat block. So what is the, what, what purpose does the lore, um, you know, the paragraphs of description for him, what purpose does it serve? I actually think it's massively important. I actually think it may be more important than the stat block itself. Although I'm very incredibly thankful for the stat block. Um, but so let's talk about what does it say under Forge Fitzwilliam? By the way, great name. Love that name, Forge Fitzwilliam. Um, so what does it say? So uh, it says um, that he is a con artist who uses lies and flattery to manipulate people, right? And that's important, right? Like, in that they're saying he is a con artist, right? He, first of all, there's an artistry to what he does. That That's an powerful statement. And then the other thing it says is he is an audacious criminal. It is saying he is breaking the law. He is committing crimes. And the other thing is he's using lies and flattery to manipulate people. Whereas... Does Egan Darvis do that? He uses his charm to open some doors, but is he using? Is he routinely, relentlessly, recklessly using lies and flattery to destroy lives? Right, and that's what Forge Fitzwilliam is doing, all for his own greater good. Right, and we've already seen this that Dungeons and Dragons has really defined evil. You, you got a bunch of Seattle designers up there. They don't. They don't know good from evil. Like I don't even think they can recognize good from evil. But they they understand that they need to get need to attempt to understand good and evil in order to write a game that has alignment in it, right? And so what you see now is you see this um, very very fascinating uh, portrayal of um, of of Forge Fitzwilliams 
as putting his own needs above that of community. And that has already been defined within Dragonlance Shadow of the Dragon Queen as Hasbro's closest description of evil. Because I, I will tell you right now, I don't think Hasbro or any of the D&D designers really have any clue what good and evil is. They're all like, well, we all have lived experiences, blah, 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 blah. Right? So they don't really... It, they, evil doesn't really function for them in their world. It doesn't it doesn't have a real meaning. Now, I'm an evangelical Christian. I know what evil is, right? Like, and I know what good is, right? So I thought that was really interesting. The other thing is it's saying he's an audacious criminal. One other thing I wanted to talk about is his double cross power. So if he makes an attack against anybody he's friendly with, he gets it is automatically a critical. No matter if he succeeds on the roll, it is, it is a critical. That is powerful. And there's a lot there, right? So we are looking forward to the day when we have as much complexity on the social interaction side as we do on the combat side, and then we'll need to meet it on the exploration side. But we do have a system right now. It is friendly, neutral, hostile for dealing with interactions and, and um, stances on what you can get done with a question or with a statement. Uh, the same as using a weapon, right? And here, this is mechanically being shown with Forge Fitzwilliams, where if he has a friendly disposition with uh, you know another player character or another NPC, and then he attacks them, he gets a critical, right, if he succeeds. That's huge, right? It's very broad and very powerful. And that's one of the things I absolutely love about these this um, uh, Thieves Gallery uh, content element on D&D Beyond is... They are, they are pulling no punches, man. This stuff is for real. These legit, hardcore, like, serious, serious powers. Every single word of that is my humble opinion. What's important is when I get to hear your humble opinion, when you get in the comments and send your traffic. Please consider liking and subscribing. Have a wonderful millennium.